Who knows what the Chinese fuseki are? Can anyone tell me? Because oddly enough, some people do not know. 3, 4, and in what direction would that be? All right, Q3, and R9. Yes, this is the very basic low Chinese Fuseki variation. Uh, I'm not going to go into the high, I don't think, because I don't see that very often. I'm going to concentrate on what we uh, typically see in our games. And at least uh, in my case, I see more low than high, so much so that I don't actually recall the last time I had the high of Chinese Fuseki played against me. So I'm going to go over this variation a little bit, and I'm going to go after one more. Can anyone tell me the mini Chinese? Uh, both of you are in fact correct when you say F3 and when you say L3. Oh, you did say L3. You did say F3 and L3. Alright. I thought you just said F3. That would have been possible too, but a variation that I'm not going into right now. And yes, well, no. Not N3. It would be M3. M3 is the micro Chinese, yes. N3 is... I was actually asked about this a little while ago. Well, that's okay. To misclick, I'm still going to uh, mention it. I was asked about this a little while ago if we're ever going to, uh, in the future, see a variation such as N3 as opposed to uh, M3 or L3, and chances are we are not, simply because black having to ever play an enclosure here at A makes the corner extremely overconcentrated. It's not a position that black would ever. Uh, try to obtain for himself, where it's not out of the question that if we were to see, for example, black enclosing here at p3, that's not too bad. Yet we have a nice uh, enclosure, a bit of an extension from said enclosure. This is a little bit tighter to enclose, but still playable. Now, Let's see, just by a quick show of hands, well, virtual hands anyway, do you guys see the normal low Chinese Fuseki more, or do you see the mini Chinese? Element C says normal, call it Seki also says normal, futility, obviously knows me very well. He dares to say San Rinsei. Alright, so I'm seeing a lot of people saying normal. Alright, we'll start with the normal then. That'll give us a good baseline to determine how the uh, mini Chinese should be set up and uh, handled anyway. Um, let's see. Element C also says that he never sees micro, and that is not surprising. Typically, we tend to see more modern variations in higher Don games, simply because we typically study more. As we begin to play them, then you guys sort of catch on to them and begin playing them in your own games as well. So you don't see them now, but as it becomes more and more common, you're going to. All right, so here we have a very, very basic uh, setup. We've got the low Chinese on the right-hand side, and white pulling off dual 4-4s four on the left. Now, the question then becomes, if you were trying to handle this as white, is there anything here that you should be made aware of? For example, what is black trying to do? What is it that he is trying to accomplish with this Fuseki, with the stones that he's placed so far. Does anyone know what he's trying to accomplish? Alrighty then, it looks like we have a lot of people who know what we're trying to accomplish. Yes, what White wants to try and avoid 
because Black really would like you to approach this corner. Reason being is because White just jumped on into a pincer. And now it's Black's move. So Black should have the advantage here. We can go and play very uh, common sequence here that I'm sure most of you know since you seem to uh, know this rather well so far. And we can see that from this variation white is all but being surrounded. Not quite surrounded. We can see that white has managed to still maintain a little bit of a... has managed to poke out a little stone here in order to ensure that he's not surrounded and still has access to the center. He's not turned into a life and death problem just yet. Might be later on. But black got what he wanted. He got influence on both sides from attacking white. White's base is still open, so he can attack him later. And now he has Sente to decide how he's going to go ahead and use what he has just obtained. Which does bring together a very nice direction of play question. How would you try and use what you've just obtained? Would you try and approach white stones? Would you try and play enclosures? What would you do here? Hmm. All right, a lot of people are actually responding to my happy trick question. Why is it a trick question? Because none of the answers that I've given so far are correct. Like I said, Black has just obtained quite a bit of influence here. He managed to all but surround White and Sente. So what does he want to do? He wants to use that for himself. Basilican is now onto the right idea. What, White, what Black would want to do now is he would want to extend along the bottom. Try and use what he's just obtained. Because we can easily count this. Black might have given White a few points here on the right hand side. Not very much. Can Black obtain more of that for himself? Of course he can. And he can do it very simply with just an extension. Now, knowing this is a big move is requires a little bit of reading. I mean, you can simply go ahead and see here that Black has a wall and he has sent to you that wall, so you're going to want to do that. You can easily read that uh, simply enough. Or, I'll get to that in a moment, Calm. Or, you can also uh, realize that if we do play something else, let's go ahead and just give ourselves a very basic Jiseki here. Let's say we go and do something else, and White gets Sente. Well, then he gets to approach us in Sente, doesn't he? We have to respond to this. If we do not respond to this, then what's going to happen is this cut point is going to come back and hurt us. Because this is not something that we can really defend from. If we block this way, there's an Atari. And now the corner is separated from the center. That's no good if we try and go underneath. Well, the same thing just happened all over again, only in a different order. We haven't stopped White from backing out. We haven't stopped White from playing the Atari. So White's going to separate us here, unless we actually go ahead and make another move, in which case the what we could have built up has just shrunk to what we just gave white, about the same six points. So this is no good. This is just wasting uh, what we could have obtained for ourselves. White would be very, very happy to destroy this little wall here and make you live small in the corner. 
So instead of being reduced to that very, very small position that we really don't like, we would take Sente and try and build something large for ourselves. Now, is that weakness still available? Of course it is. But the point here is that although white can come in, how is he going to get out? Because he cannot make a base here. He can only run away. And keep in mind, I did say that white had almost been enclosed. Not quite, but just about. If he decides to go ahead and start running a group away, he's going to find that enclosure uh, solidified, and his little right group over here is going to turn into a life and death problem. He doesn't want that at all. Is J3 the ideal extension? Um, J3 is an extension that I would make because I'm aggressive and I am greedy. You can go ahead and play K3 to be a lot safer. It's, that makes it that much more difficult for white to come in. But I like fighting. I like inviting fighting. Um, I would want white to come in and then struggle might not be a good idea, but that's just where I'm at in my own play. And if white decided to say, no, I'm not going to do that, I'm going to force you to protect it, I don't mind that either. So yes, this is a little bit of a trick question. If your first inclination was to play uh, any of these moves, either A through D, then you have to work on your direction of play, because you're letting your walls go to waste. All right, now I think there are some questions I missed. Let me scan the chat real quick. Uh, Calm quoted something to me. What was it? Do not use thickness to make territory. I think I answered your question, though, Calm. You can see what happens if uh, we don't use that thickness to develop for ourselves. Were you able to see that? If you are still here. Well, you have... Uh, Element C makes a very good point. He says the proverbs seem to end up wrong half the time. Um, what you have to realize with Proverbs is that they're not absolutes, or they're not iron laws, as Komori has mentioned. That, generally speaking, they're a good guide to follow, but there's always going to be exceptions. That's one of the harder things of teaching, if you actually go around uh, trying to say, you know, always do this, always do that. Chances are, the very next game your student gets into, they're going to run into an exception where, no, they shouldn't have done that, or yes, they should have done that. So that can be one of the difficulties in teaching pretty much anything in Go. Um, how would white answer F3 pincer? Uh, that would be very, very difficult to answer. Um, let's go ahead and go back to this position. If white answered by backing away, black would be happy, and he would quickly establish a little bit of a framework here on the bottom. If he decides to pincer, uh, I suppose it'd be playable. It seems that black might be overextending himself a bit here, but he would have to make use of this forcing move. He might even try his first move being uh, taking advantage of this very forcing move, seeing if he can get black to respond and then pins it from a stronger position. But if he simply pincered carelessly and wasn't sure what he's going to do with that stone, then he's in between uh, two rather strong positions of blacks, and that's probably not going to end very well. The key to this position would essentially be take advantage of the Aji at M3. 
Have to be careful though. Either way, you are creating a weak group between uh, a rather uh, strong black position. If you're not careful, you can probably find yourself running the rest of the game. Of course, you don't actually have to pincer if you don't really want to. I mean, even this position, it might look impressive, but you should also realize that you have uh, options to reduce it. For example, we all know this one, I think. Uh, if M3 directly after... Okay, but it has a couple of ideas here. After what? The pincer? Or after the approach? What are you referring to, Baid? After the approach, okay. So he is saying, after the approach, if white M3 then black should N3, or M4, is that what you're suggesting? I'll go ahead and assume that you are. Well, either way, oh, N3, make it harder to make a base. Um, you could, but you're still caught yourself responding to a forcing move, and white is that much stronger because of it. If it was me in this game, I would probably just extend to here and be happy. Unless, and this is something that I don't recommend anyone do, or anyone think this way, or play this way, but if I was against a weaker player, maybe I'd go ahead and extend to F3, because I know I could outfight them, and I can essentially get away with murder. Not a good idea, but that's something that would also cross my mind. Yeah, we're all tempted to do that occasionally. Um, element C wondered how to respond to that reduction anyway. Perhaps I'll go over that later, but right now I don't want to get stuck on one variation. Yeah, in handicap games, you definitely have to overplay it. That's true too, call it Seki. That's why I really, really hate handicap games, because I typically don't like overplaying. Alright, so the question then becomes, obviously, if this leads, or potentially leads, to disasters and something that Black wants us to do, then what should we do? Well, then things get a little bit crazy. Because if we can't approach normally, then how are we going to approach this position? Are we just going to hand them the entire right side and go about our business? That doesn't seem like a very uh, good idea uh, either. We need to at least try and fight it, if we at all possible. And pros have studied this position, and they've come up with all sorts of different responses. Now there are no trick questions here. I mean, element C is mentioned, N4, that's playable. Um, if you keep studying professional games, you'll also see N3 uh, played. You might find K3. You might find essentially any of these that I'm marking now. Just about any move on the bottom that's not an approach. The idea being, let's go and simply take a look at B, because element C recommended N4. And this is one that... Uh, this is the first response that I actually learned when I began studying professional games. The idea here, that we can force black into playing an enclosure, then we can simply back away. Now, does anyone know why on earth forcing your opponent to take territory would be considered a victory? How does that make any sense? Bide says, top expansion, not sure what that means. Dog tag says less. I guess he's pointing out that black might be getting less this way. Uh, Kamoya says over-concentrated. No, black is not over-concentrated. Uh, call it 
Seki, R9, it seems oddly placed now. Not really, that seems like a decent position for R9. Alright. Ah, we have a much better reply here. It's an enclosure with an extension. You've hit it very, very well. What this has turned into is now is no longer the Chinese Fuseki. What we have now is quite simply an enclosure with an extension. And we can see how to handle the enclosure with the extension in a lot of different books. This is a fairly standard position to look up invasions from. I think I have at least, well, I probably only have one book which says how to handle it. Um, I'm certain there are a lot of books who, uh, where you can actually look up how to handle this. So you essentially turn Black's position into a much more familiar position to deal with. For example, we have an idea that there's still this uh, Aji here at A that we might be able to get away with. We've got B, perhaps even C. So we still have three ways to reduce Black's position. There's no longer any sinister trap here waiting for us. We've turned it into a much easier to handle position. Meanwhile, White gets to expand off his 4-4 stone. And if Black's not careful, he might be able to expand even further. So the Chinese Fuseki has been dealt with. It is no more. The minute you enclose it, then you turn yourself into an enclosure with whatever else you happen to have. So that is also one way of dealing with it. Of course, the trouble with dealing it that way is that you did just give territory to your opponent. So there are a lot of different uh, options here, like I've uh, gone ahead and mentioned uh, all of these. And that's because professionals keep studying this position and trying to figure out which one's better than the others. And I, I could not tell you. I've played just about all of these. I'll go ahead and highlight my favorites, but that's about as much as I can do. Um, I think these four are my uh, ones of choice right now. And these ones I will go over. B, we just saw. A might turn into the same thing. We might see the enclosure with the extension again, and we can back off. And if we back off this way, then unlike in the previous variation, black can no longer undercut us later. Hello. In this variation, black can no longer undercut us. That might be a little bit, uh, a little bit more favorable for white in some of our minds. Certainly in mine. Um, let's see here. Element C says weirder responses. Are you referring to G and H? Oh, to B. might look strange, like I mentioned, that's the first one that uh, I really learned when I began studying professional games. That's what they were simply playing at the time. Nowadays, they tend to be enclosing, simply because Black wants to extend along here. He would love to get an extension to, say, K4, but if this position gets pincered, then how is K4 going to live or counterattack? considering it can no longer make a base, because it's sandwiched between the pincering stone and a strong corner. Uh, the large knight, essentially an extension from that. If black simply extends all the way to k4 again, then that is a pretty tight pincer. So black just falls into an attack. Um, let's
let's see. So usually what um, Black will try and do, and this is not just in this Chinese Fuseki, it's pretty much in this one, it's in the mini, it's in the micro, everywhere. What Black's going to try and do typically, rather than in closing and going about the game, he's going to try and find a way to keep the spirit of the Chinese Fuseki alive. He's going to want to keep inviting that um, approach, because he knows that if white comes in, he's still in trouble. So black might look at this position, and as we've seen in many professional games, he might decide to play the shoulder hit. Because if black works, if white works against this, then we can clearly see a very large position being developed for black. Now granted, white gets some influence as well, but black cannot in any way be unsatisfied with this position. I mean, he had a framework, he built off it, all the way up to the seventh line, and he still has room for expansion. The top is still open. If he gets a move, say, at around K16, then this just becomes enormous. Respond with O5 instead, so says futility. Ooh. Futility, are you suggesting that white should cut here? Oh, before. Um, I'm not certain what you mean before. Before when? I'm not certain when you'd be able to uh, actually go ahead and play O5, unless you're going to begin off with that move instead of N3. And that would certainly be a little bit strange. guess futility is not there, so I'm going to go ahead and move on. What else other comments did I see? Uh, we have a question now. Two question, O4 at K4 and Honey after 3 in this one. O4, okay, at K4, alright. Oh, so you're saying pincer? Yeah, that's another way that uh, we used to see black respond to this position as well. He would pincer white, force white to come on in, and then from here we would get into involved. We would get involved into a fight. This was playable as well. Now I'm seeing the. Um, it can be. I'm seeing this a lot more because it's a lot simpler. There's really no fight involved unless white does something really, really uh, bad and decides to cut. Though that does uh, bring up an interesting question. Why is this bad? If white decided to go ahead and play the Hane, or if white decided to go ahead and play the cut here, why would this not be beneficial to him? Yeah, it seems like we all see the problem immediately. White just created two weak groups in black's strong area. So the question would become, how is he going to handle all of these weak groups? White doesn't have any hope of being able to handle all of this. 
as suicide or as Uchida just mentioned, uh, he's going to handle it by dying. Indeed. So, yes, this is uh, the general spirit of the Chinese Fuseki. Rather than white is going to try and force black to enclose, if at all possible, and black is going to try and resist enclosing and keep building as long as possible. In that one, the other question, why ex... why wa what? other question was, why extend third time? Ah. Uh, you were wondering here? It's to limit the Aji. We could go ahead and Hane here, but it's safe to say we're going to get cut. Because we know that these stones are going to have a liberty problem. So rather giving that uh, rather than giving that extra Aji to our opponent, we're going to go ahead and push. And now if he decides to follow us, then we can go ahead and Hane, because if we still see this cut point, well, uh, let's go ahead and play this out real quick. This isn't suddenly a forcing move. Black can't be captured or put in Atari by white's next move. So this sort of thing is no longer a problem. Rather than if we saw it um, here, well, suddenly that's a very large problem. So there's a lot less Aji simply by pushing that one extra liberty. Doesn't look like it. You wouldn't uh, think of it at first. But yes, that one extra liberty is quite literally the difference between life and death. Um, M10 can suddenly go off on its own without hurting N6. I'm going to assume you meant... I'm not certain what you meant. Without hurting M6. Oh, the cutting stone? Oh, this? Oh, M9, yeah. I see what you mean, yes. I think. Yeah, I was a little bit uh, confused by M10. Is it possible to Tanuki from White's approach? That's another... Procaster warning, go away. No, seriously, you go away. Uh, that's another excellent question. Would you want to play elsewhere from this? And if you do, then chances are you don't know why you're playing the Chinese Fuseki. Because the entire strategy involves getting white to approach your corner and profiting from it. Well, now white has approached your corner. So... Indeed. It was probably... Uh, played elsewhere, though, for a strategic reason. Usually in amateur games, it's a mistake. If you've studied it and know how to handle it, then I would say go ahead and experiment and see if it works for you. But if you haven't, then I would say you should not go ahead and uh, play elsewhere, because when white follows up, however he's going to, then suddenly you have two stones against your one. That should have been the other way around. I mean, that is the same as if... Um, let's go back for a moment. That would be the same as if... White simply went ahead and approached. You responded with the pincer. And White simply replied. Yeah, you've probably studied positions enough to know uh, how to handle playing elsewhere. Professionals are always studying prof uh, positions, coming up with uh, new sequences, seeing if they work. Uh, 
let's see, that's a lot of time on just the regular Chinese Fuseki. Um, is there anything else I wanted to cover on this before I go to the mini? Um, I don't think I mentioned this, but I'll go ahead and do it. I see this sometimes in, oh, I'm going to say, 10 Q-ish games, I'm going to go ahead and say. Classic mistake because this just gets kicked with no hope of being able to make a base. This is about the worst position white could hope to be in. Because now it's hard for us to live, we're gonna have to run away, we're almost surrounded. Black's just gonna keep building and building. Do you want to talk about how black should continue if white ignores such as playing on the left? Um, well, in, this, in the variation that I mentioned, I have no idea where that was. Uh, I think we were here, and then black went there. There's the variation. Uh, in this one, you're just going to wind up going into a Jiseki. I mean, if white ignores that black is playing Chinese. Oh, well, that's fairly that's fairly obvious. If um, if let's say white plays elsewhere, then black will simply extend, and black will be happy extending, because he's making a faster framework than white is. If white wants to continue developing the framework, then white's going to realize black's one move ahead. So white probably should not be playing in this fashion. Because he's trying to use... Yes, Josh just played Tengen. But yes, if white uh, finds himself uh, playing this way, he's going to quickly realize that he's playing for a large framework, while his opponent's playing for a fr large framework, and he's one move behind. And that one move is very, very large, as we can see here. Alright, now I think I'm going to go ahead and switch to Mini Chinese. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to...